So I've done videos in the past on what I look for in a brokerage here in Ontario, but I essentially rank what I'm looking for in this order. The people, the training and support, the numbers and future growth for inspiration. I've definitely said that before in the past, but this video, let's break down the exact questions. Let's go through the 10 questions that I think are most important that help us understand these four categories. Just first though, if you find these videos helpful, consider liking and subscribing. It means an absolute ton to me, but let's just dive right into the video. First category is the people, and we'll do two to three questions on each of the four categories to determine if this brokerage is the right fit. And once you have these questions down, you can still do a ton of research on your own on here on YouTube or Google. I'll also put a link in the description below that has all of these questions on a PDF and more, so download that if needed. Okay, so the meeting starts before it starts. I suggest priming your mind and coming into this interview or meeting with the mindset of, I can help grow this brokerage if it's a right fit for me. It goes both ways. They are looking for an asset to grow their company and you are looking for a future partner to grow with. At the beginning of the interview, I'm just super friendly, open, honest. If they have any questions, I answer them. But now the tables have turned and we now start asking them questions. First question straight out of the gates to understand the people. And again, the person you're interviewing could be a brokerage representative and real estate agent like myself. It could be a managing broker or it could be an employee of the brokerage that handles just recruiting agents. First question, and this might sound a bit strange, but I ask them about themselves. One, what are your long-term goals real estate wise for yourself and your family? I know that sounds a bit strange, but you'll learn so much about that person with how they answer that question. If they embrace this question on a human level, this is a great thing. If they brush it off or say something simple like retire, this is going to be harder to make that connection. Connection. I got this question once and I was able to explain that I do have weekly, monthly, annual goals all written down and constantly refining but my main goal is daily purpose. You are looking for someone that is in this real estate business for life and on a daily level, they are being an asset to their clients growing their business. They are providing support, training, and tools and working with other realtors on that daily level to give them purpose. Look to make that connection because the people you join the brokerage with could be lifelong business partners of yourself, not just helping you grow your business, but also giving you that daily purpose. The second question in the people category is two, how important is my success to you? Another tough one there that they might not be ready for, but if you ask this question to a person that is self-aware, they are established in life, they are open, their communication with people around them, family and friends is sound, they possess that daily purpose, this will be a simple question for them to answer. You're looking for them to understand with that question and answer that your success is their success. They're going to provide you, of course, with all of the resources you need, all of the training support and tools, but then it will be up to you, the real estate agent on the other end, to be resourceful with those resources. Again, just like the beginning when you're priming your mind, this is a two-way street. If they are there for you and they're providing you with all the resources in the world and you are putting in the effort daily, this partnership cannot be beat. Those two powerful questions will be enough to understand the people. Of course, if the conversation flows, let it flow to where it's going to be, but that will give you a great idea of who that other person is on the other end. On to the training and support, equally as important as the people you join with, not even just for brand new agents that need this training and support at the beginning, but for established agents that have that always learning mentality and understand the market is always changing. First in this category, but third on our list, ask the person you're interviewing or meeting with, how will the training work at this brokerage and who will be teaching it? Get them to show you exactly how it's going to work. If you know me by now, I love perfectly organized video tutorials waiting for me, but if they answer with something like, we have the best training, don't worry, definitely go deeper. Where is this training? Is this training specific to Ontario, Canada? Is this training recorded? Is it a live session? If it is a live session, how many days per week and from what time to when? And most importantly, who is teaching the training. Don't be afraid to ask these in-depth questions when it comes to training. It's just so important. I've met with countless real estate agents now that have joined with people in different provinces or in different countries, and they have significantly random broad training 
that is not helping their day to day. I've talked about this in a previous video before and the real estate industry is notoriously bad for training, but just make sure the person that's training you, they have great attention to detail. They can project themselves back to the beginning of what it felt like not to know the logistics of the marketing side or even the logistics of the real estate side and make sure they are in Ontario. Okay, so let's touch on support and realistically, if the people you've joined with have a lot set up, you might be okay, but you still have to find out who you can call if needed. You'll want a good list of resources just in case a strange topic comes up that's not included in your training. Ask, is there a list of good resources I have to call if needed on a specific topic that could come up? Who are my brokers in my area? Who is my broker of record? You'll want a short list of resources outside the person that you join your brokerage with. Of course, your broker, your broker of record, but a listing transaction specialist, admin staff, tech support, etc. They do go hand in hand training and support training of course, but support just in case that one to 5% of the time, something really strange comes up like a disgruntled client or something like that. And you need a managing broker to step in with support as well, though, I like to ask, and it's sixth on our list. Is there a community? Is there an environment to tap into of other agents that have our back and that want our success? People that join us at eXp Realty, of course, have access to eXp world, which is fantastic, but they also have access to these two groups of realtors in Ontario that basically have invested interest in their success as well. You'll want to look for that in today's market as well, because it didn't used to exist when I first started in real estate. They were definitely against each other. Now we can work with each other. On to third on the list, the numbers. Of course, people training and support are very important, but just after that would be the numbers. The numbers still have to make sense. In this category and seventh on our list, what are the commission splits and is there a cap to the commission splits. You'll want to keep 75 to 95% of your commission. And ideally with that commission split, there will also be an annual cap. Meaning if, for example, there is a $16,000 cap, once you have paid $16,000 to that brokerage, you've hit your cap and now you move to a 100% commission split for the remainder of that calendar year. You are putting in a ton of effort to grow your real estate business. If someone is taking 30, 40, 50% or more of your commission, this is going to significantly hinder your growth. Also, I didn't want to add this question in as just a question to ask, but you'll want to do some research to find out if this brokerage you're potentially joining has negotiable splits. Just asking, are these splits negotiable? Actually wouldn't be something you usually would want to ask a person you're going to be negotiating with. That's kind of showing your cards up front. You'll want to do some research ahead of time. For example, Remax, Coldwell Banker, Royal LePage, a few others, they have negotiable splits. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this. I'd prefer everyone on the same page and there are incentives to do great business. For example, at my brokerage EXP Realty, it's an 80-20 split with a $16,000 cap. Once you hit that $16,000 cap, you move to 100% commission split. And what's even more bigger, better for established agents or aspiring to be established agents is if you do 20 sales after you cap, you get that 16,000 back in the form of stock and awards, essentially making you a 100% commission split from the start. There is no need for these negotiations in my opinion. The incentives are a beautiful thing for established agents, high producing agents, and also agents that are aspiring to be high producing agents. So commission splits and cap is the first part of the question. You'll have to determine negotiation on your own. But the second question and eighth on our list is, is there a monthly desk fee or tech fee? And what does that come with? For example, at our old brokerage, we were paying a very high desk fee. We were having to pay for our own website and CRM. In today's market, you're going to want something for what you're paying for. So ask them exactly that. What are these monthly fees? What do they come with? So last category to this list is future growth and inspiration. For this one, the questions might be a little trickier. It might be more of a research thing, but I would ask them nine, what are the long-term goals and plans of the brokerage? What are the morals and core values of the brokerage? Try to find out if the people you join with and the brokerage itself inspires you to want to be awesome. In this amazing real estate industry of ours, we really only get one go at it. So why not choose a path that's not only lucrative and fun, but gives you so many opportunities for future growth and success. I like knowing who are the people at the very top of this brokerage. And I would ask 10, 
Who are the founders of this brokerage? What is he or she or a group of founders doing on a daily basis to build or grow the company? Even how accessible are they? Can I message, call, or talk to them? This is the fun stuff for me, and if you only get one go at it, why not join a brokerage that it's inspiring to work for. I personally compared every single business brokerage model in early 2018 when I was getting into this and it came down to eXp Realty and Keller Williams for me. And with a ton of reasons to join eXp Realty for myself, the one at the very top, of course, was the people you join with. No more scarcity mindset, no more walking into that office and feeling that poor energy. I was joining with other real estate agents and a brokerage that not only I could see myself being with for life, but gave me that inspiration, that support, and had invested interest in my success. I hope these questions helped, and if you want the PDF of these questions and more, look for that easily downloadable link in the description below. And if you wanna find out more information on what we're doing for agents and brokers that join eXp Realty with us, book a call with me. You can find that link in the description below as well. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions at all, you can DM, email, comment on this video. I get back to everyone. My name is Callum Moore, eXp Realty real estate agent here in Ontario, and we'll see you in the next one.